Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. It's Erica, and today I have my March plan with me video. This one is my real time video. I'm super excited about it because it's the long video that some of you all have been asking for. I am going to just chat about random topics while I set up my monthly and weekly pages for March. I anticipate that I won't have um, things to talk about for the entire time. So I went on Instagram, I asked you all what I should chat about, and you all came through. Check out all these responses. I'm going to have my phone nearby so that if I run out of things to talk about, I can just refer to all these cool ideas. And um, hopefully you guys will enjoy listening to me chat. Since this is a real-time video, this will hopefully give you ample time to actually plan with me. So let me know if you like this new format. I'm really, really excited. Alright, so I am going to take my inserts out that I want to plan and set up. When I write in my bullet journal, I don't really take it out, but since I'm setting it up and using stamps, and all that jazz. It's easier to do all of that, uh, all of that crafting without these like things that create an uneven surface. And once I started doing that, stamping in my bullet journal became so much easier. So that is that was actually a suggestion from one of you guys who commented. So thank you for that. Set my cover and uh, folder aside. Actually, gonna grab my writing board out from the folder because that can come in handy. Here is a January here. Some goals and tasks. February. My February task, which I haven't really gotten too much done yet. <laughs> it's already the last week of February and I'm behind. But here's March. Lots of important birthdays for this month and um, I already have all of my months set up for the year so I can like write important events but I haven't decorated it and that's what I'm gonna do first plus I have my goals and tasks page that I want to do first of all I want to use these stamps I feel like that's very fitting for what I'm about to do Okay, these are basically all the decorative stamps that I have. And I feel like the ones that I have are pretty, they're pretty good. I've been using them over and over again for different spreads and whatnot. I might want to use some of these as well. I finally am doing a uh, magic theme. And I feel like I can use these, and I don't remember where I got these. Sorry, guys. Just gonna search through my little boxes full of things that I could use. Nah. I think that's really nice. I might use this piece right here from last time. Um, yeah, that's really good. All right, so I've gathered a bunch of supplies that I want to use. Some paper here and then a few clear stamps. These are really cool. And then I also have some stickers from my stash that I've bought from random sources. Uh, I think I remember where I got these ones, but I don't remember where I got these ones, Harry Potter ones. And then the stickers that I'm gonna focus on are my new stickers. I actually drew these in Procreate on my iPad a while back. Some of you have uh, seen sneak peeks of those on Instagram. And I'm really excited because I think I finally found an illustration 
style that I like digital. A lot of times my art ends up looking a little bit like too stylized on the iPad and I wanted it to have that watercolor like traditional media feel and I never was able to get that but I think I've discovered it with the set of um, Harry Potter fan art so I made them into stickers and I'm super excited about them so let's get started. My technique for doing this of course is just putting things down and seeing where it takes me. All right, so I'm gonna delve into my suggestions right away. A lot of my suggestions are about transitioning into motherhood, how my life is with the baby, and basically like how my life is. So yeah, maybe I'll chat about that because right now I am so exhausted, you guys. I. I don't even know how to describe this level of exhaustion that I feel deep in my core. Like right now I'm a little bit excited because I'm surrounded by all this lovely stationery. I don't really know if I've ever been this tired even in college when I was like pulling all-nighters for finals and whatnot. Like I think this is a whole different level of tired because it's just like so much interrupted sleep of course right now it's the middle of the night and um it's the only time where i can really like record i think i've mentioned that already but i don't remember because like i said i'm exhausted i just really hope that Jaden, that's my baby's name by the way i just really hope that he doesn't wake up again because he kind of ha uh, hasn't been going down very easy tonight been getting up a lot trying to feed. He might be going through another growth spurt. I am not sure. Other than the exhaustion, the transition into motherhood has been awesome. It's like very different extremes. So like the, what I mean by that is with parenthood there's high highs and low lows. Like there will be moments where you feel so much joy that it's just pouring out of you like you don't even know what to do with all this extra love that's overflowing and then there's other moments where you're sobbing at 3 a.m. because you're so tired and you don't know what to do and your baby's crying you're just all crying together and you're covered in like all kinds of gross things it's just like a more broad um, spectrum of emotions I think is what parenthood is and I think that just makes my life so much more rich. It's it's like this beautiful chaotic mess right now. Especially because I have three dogs too, so. All right, so I gl I've glued one piece of paper down. <laughs> I just feel like this is gonna take me so long <laughs> because um, I'm not used to chatting and working at the same time, but it'll be all right. Jaden is the cutest kid. Okay, so Sam and I have agreed not to show him to... I want to do like a piece of washi tape over here to cover up these blank squares. That's where I like to decorate. So I'm really going to focus on like here and here and here. Alright, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So uh, Sam and I... Sam being my husband, uh, we've decided not to show Jaden's face on Instagram or on YouTube or like anywhere like that. But um, you might find a picture of Jaden on my blog because no one really goes on my blog. Basically, we just don't want to put his whole persona out on the internet until he's ready to, like until he's old enough to decide that he even wants to be all out on the internet like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just like a decision that Sam and I have made. Actually, he was kind of cool with it at first, but I was like, eh, I don't know if I want people to be judging my baby because 
you know, I really don't care if people say negative comments to me, which they don't really. And if they do message me, I will block you right away. But if I see anything from someone, even if it's a troll that says something about my son, I will flip out. Like I will hunt that person down. So it's just a better choice for me not to put my son's like image out there because like, yeah, you can say like, oh yeah, your art sucks. I don't care. But if you come at my family or whatever, y'all don't even know. That's not, that's not what I'm about. Anyway, this, this has gotten really <laughs> fierce mama bear real quick. So, um, let me, let me see here. All right. So first I want to do some stamps. Um, since this is a Hogwarts -y type of spread, Harry Potter fan art, I'd like to use these cathedral looking stamps. So um, I think I'm going to use some of my Versa Magic. I'm like really feeling that one. Sarah's sand is very nice. And the uh, Versa Magic is the ink that doesn't bleed through, but the Memento does. So I like these colors a lot, though. So I use them for like stamping on other paper and then collaging. But for stamping directly onto my paper here in my notebook, I I like to use Versa Magic. Just coating it very gently, very lightly. There's a plane going on overhead. We we get a lot of planes around here. They're very loud. I'm sorry. I didn't really think this through. Sometimes my ink dries before <laughs> I decide to put it down somewhere. Maybe I'll put it up here. I'm just gonna go with it because I really don't have time for all this indecision. So to clean it off, I just put it on this like scrap paper here. I'm really feeling this lantern. I feel like this is totally reminding me of Mr. Filch right now. With, with Mrs. Norris. Same color, I think, just to keep it cohesive. Oh, found a little dog fur here. Alrighty, get that out of there. Speaking of the dogs, they are doing really well. Um, some of you asked how the dogs are, and they are very well, thank you very much. I plan to do a vlog and do goodbye doggy montage so you can see their lovely furry faces again. And as far as the dogs and the baby, they don't interact much at the moment. Um, I imagine that'll change as Jaden gets older, and um, that'll be even more chaotic. <laughs> They reacted well. I think we did it in a very controlled way. We got some advice from our friends and family who have had dogs and babies together. So we introduced the dogs to some of Jaden's things from the hospital after he was born. Uh, my sister brought back like his little hat and um, some socks or something. And they let the dogs sniff Jaden's scent so that they weren't like totally surprised when he came back home. Uh, let's see, Siva the Diva, my first dog, my medium-sized dog, she's been a little overprotective. So that has been a challenge, but nothing that is too challenging. Yeah, we're just working on it, trying to get her some more exercise. My favorite thing to do is walk the dogs with the stroller and I walk Captain and then someone walks another dog and then um, one of the bigger dogs gets a solo walk because they do really well by themselves. Yeah, it's a good time. I think I'm going to do that in, uh, in the same color. Let's, why not? <laughs> a lot of neutrals going on right now. Maybe right here. I don't know why I would put it there. I don't know. It's not really a special day or anything, but I want to put it there. That's faded out, but that's okay. Little World of Beethoven asked me about uh, time management. How do I manage it? Baby, pets, household chores, etc. 
Whew, okay. Um, and this person asked something similar. Reese, uh, how do you manage your time for bullet journal despite other activities? So it seems like a few people are interested in, in time. Basically, I just have to give up something, right? Like we all have 24 hours in a day and I I give up sleep, to be honest. Um, I also don't really have much of a social life <laughs> right now. Like, I haven't seen anybody besides my sister, my mom, and my husband, and my other friend Heather since Jaden was born. And um, I didn't really see a lot of people before that, which is sad for me because I am an extrovert and I thrive on seeing people. I'm just so tired and I've got so much to do that I don't really feel um, sad about it anymore. Like I feel like I don't have time to be really worried about my social life. So that's a perk. For me, I, I do give up sleep and I really don't recommend it. Like I'm the type of person to say like, oh yeah, you should get sleep or like you should drink enough water. Are you taking your meds and don't forget this and that. But then I'll like forget all that and I won't sleep. That's who I am. And um, it's really taking a toll on me, as you can see. Um, I'm all over the place with my thoughts. It's really hard to kind of like focus right now. And uh, I hope that you guys aren't like that worried about me. I'm fine, honestly. It's just like a way of life for me. Should I put the broomstick here or should I put the owl? I think I shall put the owl, aka Hedwig. Oh, side note, I like using clear stickers for my own planner, but th these stickers are available in opaque matte white stickers. So if you're not into clear stickers, the clear stickers are definitely more subtle. So with this kind of subtle neutral theme, I just really like clear stickers. And I also find them to not be as bulky. Yeah, and you can like see the stamp through the sticker, so you can do a lot of cool layering and stuff. I like to use some of the really tiny stickers for um, areas that are in between, you know, like in the boxes. I don't want to take up too much real estate for writing. This calendar isn't really super important to me because I use it as a social calendar and like I just said I don't really have much of a social life right now. I hope that in the spring and summer though I become a lot more social because I I need to recharge and being around people energizes me. I think this one needs a pair of glasses right here. Since there's like a potion bottle and a cauldron I will do more potiony stuff. I just love these tiny little stickers that I made. They're just so cute and adorable. Maybe I should zoom you guys in so that you can see what the heck is going on. Oh, that's cute. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. This spread is turning out to be quite lovely. Let me let me put this here. Doesn't matter. Since this was like faded, I'll just cover it with the sticker. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, that feels good to me. So I think, guys, I'm gonna move on to the next page, and I might jump back to this page to do some more decorating, but I really just want to move on so that I can look at this page again with fresh eyes later, and I'm going to do some stamping and whatnot. When we're talking about time management, I definitely feel like I'm not the best person to ask because 
I just feel like I'm not very good at time management, to be honest. And that's why I was drawn to bullet journaling and stuff in the first place. That turned out a little faint, but that's okay. I definitely want to get better at time management. And I feel like I've got a pretty good rhythm going with the baby and the dogs. So to balance all these different aspects of my life, um, I work around my baby, I work around the pets, and I fit everything else in. And I think that's just kind of what being a mom is like. When you have dependents and you have things that you're responsible for, you know, they come first. Sorry about this plane, oh my goodness. Is this not a good time to record? When, when is a good time to record? I guess there's no perfect time, right? So, I feel like there's definitely more planes now than during the day. Ooh, that turned out a little bit more uh, visible. Whatever. Oh, you know what? This is my old pad. I have a new one. better. Now I feel like going back in with the O. Oh. Alright. I think the best way to talk about time management is um, talking about what routines that we've settled in now. I definitely had a hard time when Jaden was born because it was just a difficult situation with a newborn that needed to feed every one and a half to every two hours non-stop even through the night barely any sleep now it's a little bit easier because he's over three months old and he's sleeping for longer stretches at night so this is my typical routine with Jaden and the dogs and my family. Pretty much wake up around 6 a.m. Jaden wakes me up to feed and then I diaper him and like play with him and do all that. And while I play with him in the kitchen, I also eat a little bit of food. So usually that's like a piece of fruit and like a bagel or cereal or something like that. Just something easy, something where I don't have to turn on the stove ideally because I don't want to be like worrying about him and then worrying about the stove. So I um, scarf down some food, play with him in a pack and play in the kitchen. And then I um, feed the dogs. Sam actually gets up and lets the dogs out in the backyard in the morning while I'm feeding Jaden. And then, um, then Jaden is ready for his nap. He still naps quite often for a three month old. So he naps about twice in the morning. And I feel like he takes shorter naps than most babies, which made it a little difficult at first to get any work done. But I found a rhythm with him. So during the day, I actually tidy the house during his first nap. Um, I vacuum until he goes to sleep with him in the baby carrier um, attached to me. And he sleeps so much better when he's near me. So once I got a baby carrier, it was like a total game changer. And I was able to get so much more done. So I'll vacuum. I literally vacuum every day now, which is probably necessary because with three dogs, fur gets everywhere. So I vacuum, I tidy up the kitchen, I like wipe down a room. My house is honestly pretty clean for, for this stage in my life and I didn't think that it would be. But okay, so I do like an hour of tidying up or so. Maybe a little less because when you clean every day, it, it doesn't like accumulate and then you don't have to spend that much time doing it. Um, so, so that would be his first nap. Then he'll wake up and I'll feed him, change him, and, uh, diaper him again. And that process usually takes like an hour to an hour and a half that he's awake. 
and he'll play. We'll do activities and stuff. For his second nap, then I head over to the studio, my little room here, and then I put him back in the sling and I will pack orders and stuff. Cause that's like my first priority is the customer who's like literally giving me money for um, my products. And so I'm like working on my shop stuff. That's my first priority for a circus studio at all times. You know, I'm just like super grateful for everybody who's put in orders because that's literally my job and it's like helping to contribute to my family's well-being. So thank you so much. We like to keep it moving during the day. So if I stop and sit down while he's in the baby carrier, Jaden will fuss and he will get right back up. He just loves being swayed around. He loves noise. He loves when I talk a lot. So um, for my last video, I actually had him in the baby carrier and I did my voiceover. I was walking around and recording it and that made me a little bit out of breath, I think, but I just need to keep it moving. During the day, I'm like doing anything that I can where I'm moving around. I don't really get a lot of time to sit and write or sit and draw or record or do anything like that. You know, once I realized that it would be pretty much impossible for me to do that, he doesn't get good quality sleep when he's laying down in his crib during the day. Um, we, he's just by my side. I either make something really quick for lunch, maybe like have a granola bar. I eat tiny, tiny meals throughout the day now. I don't like actually have like a big, one big meal for lunch, um, especially since I'm eating like a smaller breakfast, like a piece of fruit in the morning. I think I eat like five little meals a day, five or six, to be honest, and I like it better that way. For dinner, I will actually sit down and eat a bigger meal with Sam. This uh, stamping process is taking me forever because I'm talking. <laughs> it usually doesn't take me this long. I like talking about my routine because actually now that I think about it, we've settled into a really good rhythm. So after lunch, I will actually put Jaden in the stroller for his third nap and he will nap while I walk Captain, our smallest dog. And then my sister will actually um, come with and she'll walk a one of the bigger dogs and then she'll do a walk for the other dog like a solo walk so that's really cool now that we've gotten our bearings um like after a couple weeks that i needed to heal and i needed to focus on Jaden um and like feed him a lot after that initial period it's gone back to you know a lot of activity and exercise for the baby i mean not for the baby you know my fur babies <laughs> and you know, they are getting their walks, they're getting their stimulation, um, they're getting their playtime. I think they might be getting too stimulated because I'm like constantly making noise during the day with Jaden. And sometimes I think like they get a little bit weirded out by that and they leave the room. And I think that's only going to increase once Jaden starts crawling and he starts walking. So it's like a little bit um, unsettling for the dog's routine but it's just like if we help them ease through it, lots and lots of treats, lots and lots of walks, then I think it will be fine. The next part of my routine after walking the dogs is to have dinner. Uh, Sam usually comes home, unless he's just like working late, he'll come home like around five something because he works like nine to five. He has like a typical schedule for a job. And then we'll have dinner. Sometimes Jaden's awake for that. And then after dinner, after we clean up, every other day or so, we give Jaden a bath. He doesn't get a bath every day yet. And then after Jaden goes down to bed at like 8 p.m., which is his bedtime, then I head to the studio to actually do some sit down work, breathe, and take my me time. Okay, so like I was saying before, I had a lot of sit down time, but now that I'm constantly moving around during the day and tending to other people um, and doggies, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like that there. Oh, well, it's down. Time turner.
so that's my me time. I usually will sit and do some bullet journaling and do bullet journaling for the next day. That's something that's changed. So before I would do um, bullet journaling in the morning and it would become part of my morning routine, but now I'm definitely a night planner. And it kind of works out because I've always been a little bit of a night owl, but it's exhausting after a while, you know. And that takes me to midnight or later. One time I stayed up until 2 a.m. So I stay in the studio from like 8 to 2 usually doing like my own thing. And even though I'm exhausted, I pretty much just like work through it because I really love doing this stuff and I'd rather do this than sleep and I wish that I didn't have the biological need to actually sleep to function like I wish I could just eliminate that it'd be really cool <laughs> but of course that's not the case so what happens is on the weekend I will crash and I will sleep for like a really long time and Sam takes over baby duty for one of the days some people tell me you need to sleep girl and I'm like I need to art girl like I need to art and I need to do this because this is something that fuels me I can't not do it I know it's not sustainable what else do I do and I try to sketch every day nowadays which has been awesome so I'll sketch on my iPad in the dark in our bedroom with Jaden or I'll sketch in my sketchbook you know during those late night studio times to myself. Then Jaden will get up in the middle of the night for a night feed and then I'll go to sleep. And then I wake up at six when he wants to feed again. So it's like 2 a.m. then 6 a.m. usually. And those times are very rough. They're not set in stone. I like this page a lot, you guys. And I wasn't really thinking clearly during it, so that's cool. Deathly Hallows. Woo, woo, woo. Do I want the wand there? No. I want to put the wand here. I'm sorry if I'm doing a terrible British accent. I smudged my S a little bit, but that's okay. I usually have fewer goals than actual tasks, so I left a little bit less space there. Um, I haven't set up the weeks yet, so I'm going to do that real quick. Let's look at what I've got so far for February. I like that. I didn't really fill this area up very much. Um, filled this one up quite a bit. And this is right now. Um, still February. Yay, I'm actually doing my recording before the month of March, so that's cool. So I've got a few questions about um, how I learned to draw and you know what progression do I see my art going in and I think that's a really fun topic so uh, like I said I have been working on sketching a lot more lately just because I you know like having my me time and ironically I feel like being a mom and being so busy has made me do more and draw more and make more art Simply because when I get the free time to do stuff, I'm like, I can't just sit around and waste this precious time overthinking about what to do. I just need to do it because who knows when Jaden's going to wake up and I won't have that time. I'd rather have actually done some art rather than have nothing to show for it. So I feel like that sense of urgency with having um, this baby that can like interrupt me at any moment has kind of made me a better uh, better artist.
so um, if anyone's worried about that, you know, use that as fuel. Because I do this for him too, you know. Anyway, it all comes back to Jaden. That's because it really is true that once you have a child, like everything is about your child. It, and not everything is about him, but it's all for him. It's all be because of him, you know. It, he's become my main core value. I don't have time to really overthink about like, oh, what is my art style? Oh, is this like played out? Am I a sellout? I don't have time to think about that. I just do what I love to do and I draw what I want to draw. So that's the progression, I think, of where my art is at right now. Um, I feel like I'm a lot more confident in doing whatever the heck I want to do. And that's very freeing, to be honest. I'm not afraid to make a mess in my sketchbook because I think it's just a beautiful way to look at it. You know, like, I'm just not taking myself as seriously because I've got more serious things going on. If that makes sense, let me know. With the, the drawing thing, I actually have been very interested in art from a very early age. I have a, uh, a lot of great influences in my life that are creative, like my dad, who is excellent at drawing and calligraphy and lettering as well. I feel like that is where my inspiration for art comes from. And I'm really lucky to have uh, grown up in a family that encourages creativity and art. So I learned drawing from my dad. He would take me to the library in, um, in Philadelphia, which is where I was born. And he would take me to the main branch and he would sit and draw people that were reading. And that was something that I would imitate. And I would just sit there and like draw people too. And they were, you know, just things that I drew as like a four-year-old but um, those were some of my fondest memories and then we would go down to the children's area and he would let me borrow all kinds of books so I love libraries as well <laughs> I was in a lot of art programs in my early school years and then once I got to college I actually majored in art uh, I did fine art and the art that I was making was very different I made a lot of art that was informed by my mental health. I worked on a lot of series about depression and anxiety, and my art was very abstract and conceptual. It was dark, It was, and a lot of it was uh, very, very terrifying, um, <laughs> to be honest, and it's completely changed now. I think because my uh, mental health journey has manifested itself into a more positive experience. So yeah, my art was definitely more along the lines of like gallery art back then. And now I would say I've skewed more toward like um, commercial art. I don't know if commercial art is the right word for it, but more like a uh, mindfulness art I don't know it's just about like everyday creativity and using art as like um, mindfulness practice still trying to pinpoint exactly what it is like what I do know is that I'm still playing around with different art styles and different mediums and trying to discover that and I've accepted that it will never stop changing and never stop evolving so you know, I'm going to be a student for life, I think, in terms of learning to draw, learning about art and different mediums. I think that's wonderful because otherwise it would get really boring. As far as the direction of my art, I have a lot of goals for art and that also leads into new direction for my videos and for this channel. Um, I think I want to do more drawing videos for um, my sketchbook and maybe some maybe some tutorials if I ever feel up for it because you know I don't really show a lot of my drawing and fine art background on this channel I used to but right now it's more about bullet journaling and the art that does pop in here and there is either any illustrations that I've done for stickers or you know, design work, because a lot of my stickers are, you know, 
actually pieced together from uh, vintage source material now. I'd like to start bringing back that traditional art mediums, especially now that I have this routine of being in my studio late at night and I've got these lights. Start, start to uh, expect some of those videos soon. I'm actually talking about it, it's giving me life because it's like, yes, I loved showing my bullet journal process with you guys, but you know, I wanna, I wanna bring back some of my roots to this channel. All right, so the next question I have is my thoughts on the new BTS album, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. First of all, I have been listening to the album nonstop, on repeat, over and over. I love it so much. Um, for those of you who don't know, I love BTS like many, many people out there. And I have been kind of like showing that on my Instagram stories here and there. But, you know, I always thought that my favorite group would be um, Big Bang from like back in high school in 2008 or something when I first like started listening to K-pop. Let me let this plane go by before I continue. So Big Bang, of course, is like a little bit older and back in high school I felt like it was more like, oh my gosh, I'm like totally crushing on blah blah blah. But now with BTS, I'm a little older than the typical fan of BTS, you know, the typical ARMY, but I feel like I'm just like very proud of them and they're just like doing so well and I just love seeing them succeed and that is like how I feel. It's a little bit different than how I would obsess over like other groups before when I was younger. I just feel like they're very wholesome. I like their personalities. Not only their music is really good, but like they just really entertain me. The first time I heard them, I liked their music just fine, but it wasn't until I started watching a uh, a little mini series called American Hustle Life. That was when I really just started to love them. Like and become obsessed with them and learn like literally everything about them. I don't know, there was just so many things about that that made me realize that they were just so pure and wholesome. That's why I love them. My favorite is RM, I think. I've gotten so distracted by talking about BTS that I realized my technique of doing all the letters, I've completely abandoned that. So I'm gonna go back to doing that. I don't know, I can't pick a favorite song. Like I got that question and I just cannot because of course I love Black Swan, like who does not? I love Zero O'Clock, I love uh, On. I can't, I can't pick one, don't make me choose. <laughs> like I mentioned men mental health a little bit earlier in the video and they touch on that topic and I think that's really, really awesome. Cause that's something I'm very passionate about. So yeah, those are my thoughts on BTS, and um, if you're not ARMY, you know, sorry that you had to listen to all that, but yeah, I'm just a really proud mama bear. Okay, let me go back to stamping more efficiently. Alright, and the next question I've got is tips on how to start a bullet journal, YouTube channel, or Instagram account. Uh, that's that's an interesting question because I feel like you know everybody has a different way of going about it but those who are you know have gained a following um, they all started somewhere right like we all started off with zero followers zero subscribers and I don't know some way somehow um, the following grew and for different people there's different uh, different strategies of going about doing things but I think um, for me I actually had no clue what I was doing and my motivations for it have changed wildly over the past few years I didn't actually start off with a bullet journal Instagram it was a calligraphy Instagram called Sarah calligraphy 
and I didn't plan on making it a bullet journal Instagram at all. But um, once I started posting it, that's when everything started expanding quite a bit. If you scroll back to the very beginning of my Instagram, you will see some old calligraphy and hand lettering. I'm quite proud of all of my progress, um, but yeah, it's definitely my beginner work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in terms of my YouTube channel though, I did start off with making my very first video. It was a uh, bullet journal spread in a small A6 notebook. You know, it was really slow growth at first with YouTube. It wasn't until I did Vlogmas in 2018 that the growth started picking up. So I think it had a lot to do with posting videos more often. I think that's the key that made things work for me. Besides having, you know, content that people will want to watch. It's a little bit weird to me that I have a lot of people <laughs> following along on Instagram and, and watching my videos on YouTube. Like, it's still a little bit unreal. So in terms of tips, I, I don't know. The main thing that I want to tell you guys in terms of starting an Instagram or YouTube account is to have the right motivations for it. Don't do it because you want fame or fortune because I just feel like that's that's not going to be sustainable. You have to absolutely love it in order to keep it going. I would say for Instagram, it's a little bit of the same. I think with all of these social media strategies, it's really number one, being super, super passionate about what you're doing. That's super important. Um, because the growth is going to be very slow at first. Uh, and I guess there is a, a little bit of luck to it, you know? It's not all formulaic. It's like luck of the hashtag or something. For me, I think it was also just perseverance. Like pushing through, making content even when nobody was watching. Continuing to have motivation and passion to do it, I think is really, really important and letting that shine through in what you do and in your work. Yeah, my tips are if you want to make a YouTube account and a Instagram account, there's no magic combination of things that's going to gain a big following. You just like gotta keep, keep at it. In a sense, you have to find a nice balance between giving the people what they want, but also doing what you want so that you are motivated to keep going. So when you're on the internet, a lot of the things that you're doing is very transactional, right? You are providing content that people might want and then they give you likes and whatnot. But if you look at it through a purely transactional way, you're going to lose motivation to do it. So I think it's best to have a community-based mindset to social media and growth and your art journey and making a bullet journal account. It's all about connection. I think it's best to really focus on the social aspect of social media. This is where smudges happen a lot because I get ink on my hands and then I touch the page and then I get smudgy. But sometimes I don't mind or I cover it up. Another question I got was, how do I deal with negativity, especially when it comes from other moms? I don't really get a lot of negativity when it comes to being a mom. Um, I've been very lucky that it's super supportive. It's mostly like unsolicited advice, which isn't malicious. It's just like annoying, but in a well-meaning way. So it doesn't really bother me as much. In terms of negativity in general, you know, negativity from the internet because inevitably you will get negativity because the internet is a place full of trolls um, and that is luckily very rare in this community but if I do get something that I don't like, I just block it out. It's definitely taken some practice to do so but I think especially now that I'm a mom, it's important for me to, to block out the negativity. And that's because I only have a certain amount of craps to give 
and I'd rather just, oops, I was about to do the eight twice, see? Caught myself. And it's very important for me to delineate those t craps that I have, a very limited amount, to the things that actually matter to me, that um, align with my core values. So if you're, um, so if there's some negativity that doesn't serve my core values, which are family, um, self-improvement, and uh, you know humanitarian causes, and um, my peace, then I don't have time for it, and I don't have that crap to give. So yeah, that is how I deal with negativity. I think that um, surrounding myself with positive people and people that I want to emulate and people that have good energy is something that has been very good for me and um, I've definitely gotten out of the mindset that I need to please everyone because that's so impossible and once I really started putting that into practice and stopped bending over backwards for people that were just kind of trying to use me for my kindness that was a lot better for my mental health so that's how I deal with negativity. I think self-preservation is really important when it comes to those interpersonal relationships that uh, leach your energy. So I think I'm gonna use the um, stickers that I have here called Woodland Creatures and I want to use this owl one uh, in order to create this theme of like a winter winter wonderland kind of theme I don't know so I'm gonna write the weekly overview and these are jelly roll pens they are super smooth I love them I got some questions about handwriting I always do I do have a ton of resources for not a ton but like a few blog posts on handwriting on my blog so definitely check that out if you haven't already. I do want to create a video someday about handwriting. I'm just writing weekly overview. Uh, I usually write the week number. I totally forgot. So that's 10. So I'll just write it like this this week and format it a little bit differently. Uh, like I said, I'm super out of it. So, And these are part of the new Moonlight line of jelly rolls. I'm super into them because a lot of them are more neutral and I'm super into like grays and um, warm browns and stuff like that so definitely my cup of tea in terms of color palette because a lot of the other jelly rolls they're very very bright and vivid you know. I really like using the metallic ones though and uh, yeah I'm a fan. So um, I really like, for some reason, like this section here. I think I'm going to just go ahead and put that one into the spread. Oops. A little composition there. It's very subtle. I like it. And then um, I want to see if I have any, like still using this glue that I don't really like because I bought it I bought three of them in a pack and even though I've gotten a lot of suggestions about better glue I don't want to waste it you know so I'm gonna use it up and then once I do I'm gonna get some better glue sticks because I just feel like it doesn't really stick very well and I'm gonna keep complaining about my glue stick for the next couple of videos, I'm sorry. I'll try not to, I mean. It's fine, I just need to use a little bit more of it. But I found that when I go through my um, past journals, the edges of my paper sometimes peel up, so it's not really long lasting. Um, so if you want your things to really bond, don't get craft bond. Sorry to dish you, Elmers. All right. Let's do some ripping. <laughs> Put that little owl there. 
I like that contrast with the white and, and then the contrast with the trees against that paper that's really subtle. I like it. It's so simple. You know, I just really like having just a few things here and there just to bring me a little bit of joy when I open up my bullet journal and plan. I'm going to write some tasks that I need to do this week. Like that. And then um, some other things that I might want to write on this page. I had this little section last week for meal ideas and that was really helpful and then I had some brain dumps and uh, goals, ideas for my shop so yeah I think I'll do that after I write out my tasks. Well, I'm getting really sleepy. Just a little square here and there maybe. I usually um, like to put that sort of thing on the weekend. Like I said, my weekends are for recovery from all of the late nights. Let's see, I've got this little piece of washi tape that I stuck on my hand, so why not use it for here? Let's just take a little breather and look at what I've got so far. So I've got my March page, and then I've got my goals and tasks, and then I've got this week. To be honest, I'm probably not going to do the rest of the pages for this video. I will do it in another video. So I got some questions about how to clean a fountain pen and how to write smoothly with a fountain pen. As far as cleaning the fountain pen, I highly recommend you go to Jet Pen's videos on fountain pen basics. And there's also Goulet pens which are two amazing resources to learn all things about pens um, in general. So check those out and um, that, that'll give you way more information than I could ever give you. All right, so for the rest of the video, I'm just going to write and I don't wanna chat because I might start writing what I'm saying. <laughs> I think I'll just put the music on and let the video play out. I really want to thank you for joining me for this real-time plan with me video and I'm going to do the rest of my pages at a later time. I'll decorate them and do some more chatting with you all. Until that video, I'd like to say happy journaling, happy art making, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>